sometimes the cup runneth over, but what does it, what dost it runneth over with <laughs> cups and emotion? That is the name of the game with the cup suit in tarot. And that is what we're talking about today. We know that you were born magical. We know that you are intuitive and we know that you are brimming with everyday enchantment. Here at the Sisters Enchanted, we believe in intention, we believe in intuition, and we believe in everyday magic. Welcome in to the Expedition to Soul podcast. Welcome into this replay episode of the Expedition to Soul podcast. This is number three in our Minor Arcana series that we have pulled out of the vault and we are replaying for you this week. Today's episode is about the suit of cups in tarot. Now, just as I've said the last few days, this episode is a little older. So, you know, kindness with the audio quality. We hadn't quite had that figured out just yet. Uh, you know, and, and any day is a guess. Do we have it figured out? Don't we? Who knows? But the episode itself is a lot of helpful information if you are looking to up your tarot game and connect deeper to the cards or even understand them to begin with because tarot can feel really overwhelming and is such a powerful tool. Now, the suit of cups is aligned with the element of water, um, the dreamer energy in our expansion archetypes model, uh, and our everyday magic unit in our holistic witchery program. And this is where we are really dreaming, right? We're like getting into the energy we desire and creating and detaching from what we know to be true and, and stretching ourselves to a new truth. In tarot, this suit, when we talk about emotions, really, um, it's about being nurtured, how you are when you're nurtured or not nurtured, and also choosing yourself. So listen in to today's episode and enjoy. Welcome to this episode of the Magic on the Inside podcast. I am Sarah, founder of the Sisters Enchanted, where we have been cooking up magic online for five years, since 2016. Yes. And you are? I'm Anna, and I'm never ready for the camera to start. Never. Yeah. Well, alas. I lack the ability to wait for others. I know. And I just hit go. Yes. Go record. That is one thing that I've gotten good at with cameras is that I'm getting better at looking foolish. Mm. Somebody <laughs> asked me. <laughs> so in our Tarot Throwdown program, we've been doing these extra live chats. And I did one this week on making money as a tarot reader. And... Um, Somebody asked about like the anxiety of being on social media and how you get past that. And I was like, you don't, you just ride the wave. Yes. You just ride that wave. You just hit go. What happens, happens. I would agree. What will be, will be. Carpe diem. Onward. Onward. Huzzah. Huzzah. Excelsior. 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 Okay. So, yeah, you just go with that. And today's topic, we're doing, this is the last one of a four-part mini-series here about the Minor Arcana cards in tarot. And today is on the cups as our emotions. So, in terms of what we were obviously. just... Obviously. Obviously. What we were just <laughs> talking about and just doing the thing, you know, when you just take... That the action thing, and just do, do it, thing. right? Like it can be very joyous as opposed to being stuck in perception and thought and not taking behaviors forward and then experiencing a negative energy, which is what we talked about with the swords as perception. How are you perceiving the situation? So you could perceive that you're not ready, you're going to fail, people are going to judge you. You're judging yourself. You're judging yourself. You could have the experience of with the wands of like heaviness because you're holding that to yourself um what was excitement is now heavy we talked about that but with the wands with the pentacles the behavior that you're taking you know are you able to do the behaviors to get to where you want to be or are you stuck and you're not moving through the behaviors right. and now with cups and emotions or emotional cells in the cupsy cups in the cupsy doodles. The goblets of not fire goblets because they're full of water. Because they're cups of the water. Of emotions. The water element. Of cups. Yeah. Now that we're clear. <laughs> that was that fire goblet in Harry Potter. So 
that was talking about. <laughs> I know, my hair was like the goblet of fire. <laughs> it's like, that's something. <laughs> for a second, I can put my name. Yes. My finger on it. Well, now I've done it for you. I picked your finger up and put it on it. Is it really a goblet of fire, though? I don't know. Really? Is that real fire? I mean, it's a book. It's magical fire. In a movie, so. It's magical fire. Yeah. That's different, probably. I'm unsure. My witch skills aren't exactly the same as Hermione's. <laughs> like, I don't have the little bag that a whole village could live in, and you wouldn't know. If you had a whole bag that a village could fit in. Oh my goodness. <laughs> what would you put in it? Everything. But like what exactly? Snacks. <sighs> so many snacks. A campground? I would put well Your camper? I mean we have our camper is very large. But if the bag could accommodate it. Okay. Well on a daily basis it would include snacks, a change of clothes, a change of shoes, um, multiple electronic devices, like five different books. It's all very reasonable. Well, those are the things I like to carry with me, I think. Dental floss. <laughs> okay, so dental floss. Um, my herbal supplements and some tea, maybe some coffee. So many ideas. Hats. Some fun hats. Some hats. Socks for when my toes are cold. Your black fuzzy blanket. Yeah, a blankie. <laughs> <laughs> a blankie needle. A deck of tarot cards. Likely. My lunar tracker. Sarah does travel with many books. And you know how she has time to read them. She Bags puts a purse full. down and they just like fall out. Bags full of books. And loose tarot cards. Yeah. Yep. That's me. <laughs> All right. Well, let's talk about these cups here. Uh, and speaking of water, oh my gosh, another tangent. We do have to do this and get to it because I have an appointment at a float spa right after this. I'm going to go float in water in the dark. Scary. One of those sensory deprivation things. I don't think I have that in me. Yeah. Well, my Sagittarius Stellium. I think that says more about you than it does me. My Sagittarius Stellium is either going to have a panic attack Mm -hmm. or like totally live for it. Yeah, it's either going to become your new favorite thing and we're never going to see you again. Because I'm just floating Because you're going to be like... I have to go sensory deprive myself. Or you people. <laughs> the, the work away message will be like, I'm sorry, I'm being sensory deprived. <laughs> I can't answer your question right now. I know. Or, though, I do have a lot of Scorpio in me. And maybe that weirdness just like, is going to be like, What if hey, uh, you just have the biggest... Sarah intuitive touchdown ever. What if you just come up and you're like, I had so many ideas, which no I feel like is likely. Right now. I feel like that's likely. I thought I did think about that. Whenever I have these moments of calm, suddenly I get this like big idea. <laughs> this does not fit into the calendar. <laughs> next, next week, this is not going to be the magic on the inside podcast. <laughs> it's going to be the magic on the outside podcast. <laughs> And it's going to be by the I know. the ex-sisters of Chanted, where Sarah has decided it's in her best interest to divorce me as her sister. Because of our intuitive download. Because of the intuitive download. No, it's not going to happen. Okay. Pivot, pivot hard and fast. So I think the cups, back on what we're talking about, the cups as emotion, it's probably the most clear of the suits, right? So swords and perception, it can be tricky to see our own perception because we're in it. Um, at wands is energy and experience. Again, like... The experience is variable uh, and nuanced. Uh, pentacles is behavior. We've got to do shadow work there. Cups is emotion. I think it's like pretty clear, our emotions, because we are having them. So we're sad, we're happy, we're angry. Like our emotions, once they, the reasons for them might not be clear, but this, the scene of them, we like can typically clearly see them, unless you're a person who's really good at hiding your emotions. Uh, in which case I think that brings us back to thought and perception. Why am I thinking this thought, right? So when I'm thinking cups, I'm thinking like our living emotions, what we are living in. Mm -hmm. And what I find interesting, this is an activity for you, giving you lots of activities, is to take the cups from ace through ten, lay them out, and then you got to stick with me what I'm saying. I'm going to try to say it slow. You're going to start with the ace and the ten, so the left and the right. Kind of pull those cards together now out of the row. And when you look at that story there, ace is like an opportunity, a new beginning, an emotion, um, something to be 
adventured into. And 10 is that like joyous family card. Everyone's like allegedly looking happy. Allegedly. And what I think that's the backs of their heads. Us, we don't know. We, we don't, don't know. know. What tells us about the story here of cups though and emotion is that emotions are cyclical. They will come and go. Just where we start with this new experience, we will end somewhere and it will happen again. It's cyclical. We just opened a whole can of worms on that ten of cups. I know we did. We don't know what those people are doing. We don't. Maybe all of this time they've They're been crying. crying at the rainbow. <sighs> Guess that's what the like meanings are for though. But also <laughs> I mean, like, we weren't, nobody was, we, nobody living was there when those were made. Nobody was in the room where it happened. The room where it happened. The room where it happened. <laughs> <laughs> so, we don't actually know. Back. I know. Anna's husband just echoed it, too. Um, so, we don't know. Anyway, then we do the two and the nine. So, the two of cups, we've got, like, the shared, the hands, cupsies, sharing it's like love can be there frenzy friends or like lovey love and then the nine is also a contentment card so lead with love I right the nine we of find cups. contentment nine of cups right yeah i know when we lead with love <laughs> we find contentment the three and the eight so what we're doing is going one from the left one from the right pulling those in together yes the three of cups party hardy yes sort of card and the eight of cups is the walk walking away, away from the party yeah. Of the cups. So we can walk away from that party or celebrate when we make the choice to or move what away. happened at that party. Oh my gosh, so many good questions. So many good questions. The four and the seven. The four of cups. <gasps> what you got? What you got? Nothing. It's just, this is just a whole thing. You should do this because the four of cups is being disinterested in your choices and then the seven of cups is having so many choices. I know. It's why What do you I, even do? It's almost you just like. blew my mind. It's almost like I should teach a class on this. It's almost like it. Almost. And I should call it Tarot Coach and teach you how to do this for other people. So good. It's almost like it. <laughs> you just blew my mind. I'm adding this to the shadow manifesto. I know. This is going to be one of the units. In our I know. Shadow manifestos. Plus the one we did in the scene and unseen. So good. Okay. And then <sighs> see this is how things happen here. And then where do we leave off? The Four. five and the six. So the five of cups is like um uh, the things we're sad over, right? Um but in the six of cups is that childhood joy sort of that card. Nostalgia. Mm-hmm. So like don't like not dwelling on what has been right not dwelling on what has been right and that nostalgia about living in the the joy of the moment i just got so or excited like, i know it's such a good activity such a good activity no i was really when i i don't know when i got the idea for that it did not involve a sensory deprivation tank I'm so excited. Do you think that you could sneak your phone into the room? <laughs> <laughs> While I'm sensory deprivating yeah, myself, like, I could FaceTime you. Be like, hey, well, you know, <laughs> I'm so much. I'd really like that, and that would be something that we would do. I just mean when you walk in, if you prop your phone against the wall and turn it like on a hands-free oh recording. <laughs> You get it in there, and then we can analyze it once you're out. If my phone falls into a pit of Epsom salt water, I because would think I was, that they have more of a barrier. Because I am trying to get you footage. Are you going to do it? No, I could try it. I'm like sure there's probably no rules against it. It just feels illegal somehow. <laughs> that would, would definitely be something that we would do. Oh, I'll do it. I'll try. I'll bring it in there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure I get to like look oh, first. Yeah. I'm currently being sensory deprived. <laughs> Can you hear me? Hello. Hello. Oh my goodness, we've lost all. <laughs> because what you just said about the tarot cards I and know. coaching people and doing that practice, it was so good. Now our minds have been set free. It was really good. I was really proud of that. I'm really proud Sometimes of that. Sometimes I come up with ideas and I'm just like... My work here is done on this earth. Mike trap. <sighs> that was one of them. So good. I know. So, okay. 
let's recap the episodes here. The last, this is the fourth of the installment. Number one, swords as perception, your thoughts. Number two, wands as experience, how you're experiencing the energy of a moment. We come in like uh, excited and it, we leave heavy often because we're not, it's too much emotion. Like we're not balancing. We can get, we can get too passionate, overwhelmed, codependent. <laughs> and then the cups, we just did this the counter, the one and the nine, the one and the ten, the two and the nine, the three Sorry. and the eight. Bring them in, and there's a story there. There's a story. I know about emotion and what, how we live in emotion, and how that manifests for us in our lives. What we can do with it. There you go. So many takeaways. So many takeaways. All right. Well. If you just tuned in on this one, go back, listen to the others. Head back to, like, starting at episode 13, where we go through the whole tarot as well. That's good stuff. That's really good stuff, yeah. I hope you liked hearing about the suit of cups and the element of water in this episode. We love talking about tarot here. It's really one of the one of the things the Sisters Enchanted was founded on. So we just get really excited when we get to bring this out for people. And we know how good these episodes are. So it's a joy to share them again with a whole new crowd. Uh, if you have any questions about learning tarot, want some resources, we do have a free business workshop coming up for people who might be interested in telling, sharing their gifts with the world. If that is you and you're a tarot reader or a healer and you're just tuning in to learn more about this modality. Certainly reach out, let us know, we'll get you the details. Tomorrow we have the fourth episode of this replay series airing for you. And then you'll have all of the minor arcana information in your hot little hands. Uh, until then, thanks for listening in. Be sure to, you know, share all that good stuff. And I hope that you have an enchanted rest of your day ahead. If you liked this episode of the Expedition to Soul podcast, please rate, review, subscribe. If you're listening on Apple podcasts, it will really help us spread everyday magic, intention, and intuition to the masses and helps us so much as a small business. Be sure to hit that subscribe button on your favorite podcasting platform so you never miss an episode. There are new episodes every Tuesday and astro forecasts for the week ahead every Friday. If there's any topics you'd want to hear, anything you want us to dive deeper into, shoot us an email at magic at the sisters And as always, thank you so much for listening and being part of the community here at the sisters enchanted, and we'll see you in the next episode. Mm -hmm.